Hi guys, welcome to Art. Can you just um, pop in the chat that you can hear me? Brilliant, thanks Emma. Um, okay, and Emma, you're going to be my go-to. Um, can you see my screen? Brilliant. Okay, so um, so yeah, welcome to A-Level Art. Really exciting. Um, can't wait to actually have you all in the classroom and um, creating again. Um, as I go through, um, pop any questions you've got in the chat. Um, I'm going to give you a really brief um, outline of what um, A-Level Art is. I'm not actually going to show you any examples because I think it's better um, actually to see the work firsthand. Um, so that, we can do that in September. But if you really, really want to sort of look at things, um, then um, obviously the internet, look up um, A-Level Art. Um, there's, there's so many things that you can see on there. And there's also a really good um, couple of really good websites, which um, I will send out as well. Um, OK, so your A-level is, um, is in fine art. So um, the fine art bit um, is sometimes a bit confusing because I think a lot of people think of fine art as being kind of really detailed um, Renaissance sort of style portraiture or landscape. Um, but basically, fine art encompasses everything. Um, and we choose fine art because you can do um, a little bit of any, everything or you can specialise in something. So it's basically the broadest um, A-level art course that there is, um, which means that if you want to um, go down um, a graphics route or a um, painting route or, or um, textiles, you can incorporate that into your work. You don't have to just stick to painting and drawing. Um, so yeah, so it's really broad and um, we can kind of make it really individualized to what your skills and strengths and also what your ambitions are. Um, oh, sorry. Okay, so um, a little bit of a breakdown. I'm not gonna give you lots of information about um, assessment and how it's all set up because um, that can be quite daunting and it's quite complicated. Um, and it's something that you, know, you don't really need to know right um, at this minute. But if there's something that you are not sure about, um, again, pop it in the chat and um, I will answer any questions. So how is um, your A-level um, made up? So unit one um, is basically coursework. So things that you do, um, that you've set yourself or that your teachers set you. And unit two is the exam. So it's very much um, set up like the traditional GCSE. Now I know you guys have had um, a bit of a strange kind of GCSE time because you didn't really get to do your exam project. Um, but if you had, um, it would be the same as this. So you'll get that, hopefully you'll get that um, experience. So um, unit one will start from um, September well, from now, really, because we're going to set you some work over the summer, but um, but from September. So um, that is your coursework, and that will make up 60% of your final A-level grade. Um, and that is started this year and carries on until um, December of year 13. So just over a year um, that you'll be working on that area, because that's the sort of majority of your marks. Then um, you have unit two. Um, which is an exam, and that's 40% um, of your final grade. So those two things make up your total A-level grade. Um, the exam is practical. Um, you will get a set of themes um, from the exam board. You'll choose um, which one um, stands out to you, which one you think you'll get the um, most enjoyment out of, which one will um, show your skills off. And then you work on preparation work from January, February time up until April, May time, and then you have your exam. Now your exam is 15 hours at A-level, which sounds like um, a huge amount, I know, 
Um, so it's over three days, um, but by the time you've got to that point, you know, you'll be ready to um, produce a really amazing final outcome, um, which will take that time. So, um, so yeah, don't be put off by that. Um, look forward to it. Um, assessment, um, so you're assessed on the same assessment objectives as you were at GCSE, um, but they are in a little bit more depth. Um, you'll move at a bit of a pacier rate um, and there'll be a higher expectation of um, what you produce, um, how you show your understanding and um, the quality of your work, um, because you'll have a lot more lessons as well. So you will have eight lessons a fortnight. Plus you will have um, independent study time where we would expect you to come up to art and use that time to kind of be working either in your sketchbook or on preparation sheets or on a final outcome. Um, so just as a little reminder, the um, four assessment objectives are um, your artist research, but we also bring in like context and social environments to that. So it doesn't always have to be like artists and designers. Um, it could be kind of things that are happening in the world, cultural ideas, anything like that. Um, AO2 is your experimentation, so trying out lots of different materials and techniques um, and developing ideas. AO3 is your recording, um, so your drawings, your photography. And AO4 is your final pieces. Um, so note the, um, the S, so the plural. Um, so it's not just one final outcome and um, you'll be producing final outcomes as we go through and you'll notice kind of, a, as I said, a much more pacier rate. So there'll be, um, you'll be covering those assessment objectives and then coming up with a final outcome and then developing onto that and creating another final outcome. So all the time you're experimenting and, and like really pushing yourself to try out new things. Any questions so far? Okay, next slide. Um, okay, so as I said, so your coursework kind of starts from now. Um, but overall, over the um, year 12 and the start of year 13, uh, you'll do three projects. So the first two are quite teacher led. Um, so we set the theme. Um, but with the hope that you will start to become a lot more independent and start to bring ideas to that theme. So they're quite broad um, and it's mainly to look at different artists, um, materials and techniques um, and like really get to grips with those assessment objectives that you need to cover. So um, the first one that we start off with is um, a sense of place. Um, and this is kind of quite an architectural landscape um, type of project. So and we look at lots of different artists. Um, we're hoping that we can go on um, like a little day trip to Oxford, but um, we will see whether that's possible. Um, that'd be quite early on, um, September, October, so we can collect photographs to work from um, and do some sketching. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of um, looking at buildings, but in a kind of quite unusual way. So um, not all kind of architectural um, perspective drawings. Some of them are very textural, looking at different ways of working, um, different material, um, different backgrounds, what you can work on. Um, and then the second one is the human condition. So this gives you a little bit of a chance to um, start to develop in an area that you want to. So. We look at kind of bones and structure, kind of emotion, uh, mental health, but also kind of um, portraiture. Um, so th anything that makes a human a human, basically. Um, and that's when you can start to bring in a little bit more um, independence and ideas. So that will take us up to um, sort of February, March. And then you will start um, the um, personal investigation. So this is a really important part because this is your main assessment area um, and this is the project that you set yourself. Um, so it literally can be anything um, that you have a passion for, that you're interested in, um, 
it could be a starting point could be like an artist that you really um, love the work of it could be a theme um, or it could be kind of an idea and as I said before you can take it in any direction so if you decide that you really want to go into um, maybe graphic design at university and um, then you might want to kind of put your personal investigation so that you're including some of that so that you can start building a portfolio um, it might be that you just are really enjoying doing some oil painting so you want to look at um, a material or a technique um, but we'll give you loads of support and help and guide you um, into which areas we think that you would be best doing um, and um, yeah then you get that sort of February until sort of January time so it's almost a year um, that you're working on that project um, you can get some really in-depth work um, really good quality hopefully um, so that's 60 percent of your final grade and the other 40 percent um, as I said was is an exam project um, okay so um, a little project that we've um, that we're going to set for you over the summer is um, something called pastiche um, so um, you will have me and Mr. Check as your teachers. Um, Mr. Check's taking the um, session next week. So I'm going to introduce um, an idea that I want you to go away and think about. And then um, you're going to present that or send a slide um, of your ideas to Mr. Check. Um, he's going to present them next week and then um, going to work over the summer on just presenting um, an idea. Um, and it can be in any material, but I'll come to that in a bit. Um, okay, so does anyone know what pastiche means? It's kind of a little clue there in the brackets. Should have taken that off. Or is it, can anyone, um, has anyone seen um, any pastiche? They can think of an example. Guessing silence, silent chat means no. So I'm going to plow on. Okay, so um, literally pastiche um, means an artistic, dramatic, literary or musical piece openly imitating the previous works of other artists, often with satirical intent. So how does that transfer into art? Um, okay, so here we've got um, a piece by Banksy. Now, in the chat, I'm sure some of you can think of or recognise um, what piece of work he has um, used to create his own piece. Can you just pop it in the chat? No, no one, no one know. I'm sure you would. I'm sure you do know. Um, maybe you're just being shy. Yes, Emma. Thank you. So Van Gogh's sunflowers. So a really famous Van Gogh painting, um, which Banksy has kind of created a modern day version of. So he alters images that are well known and recognisable, um, but make but by making those changes. He's also making um, a bit of a social commentary about modern life. So he uses what we call irony and satire to just add a little bit of humour, but also to make people kind of think. So in this one, we've got um, Van Gogh sunflowers. I think I've got the original on the next slide. There we go. Looking um, beautiful and blossoming. Um, and then we've got Banksy's kind of dried up, um, dead, I guess, some flowers. So, um, but it's in the detail as well. So um, I don't know if you can see on the um, on the slide here on the vase, um, Van Gogh has signed it with Vincent going around and like the background and the way everything is um, presented. 
um, he sort of thought about that and he signed it Banksy, but in the same sort of typeface as Van Gogh has used. Um, and the same sort of background and colours. So you can you can straight away tell that it's um, Van Gogh, but there's something different about it. Okay, um, the Mona Lisa, one of um, arguably the most famous um, paintings of all time. Um, so by Leonardo da Vinci. Um, so painted in 1503 or around that time. Um, lots and lots of kind of pastiche art have been done on this piece. Um, so here we have Banks's. Um, so he's taken um, the famous kind of smile of um, or the, what's called the enigmatic um, face of the Mona Lisa and created a stencil, which is his obviously trademark um, technique. Um, and then signed it around, but then also kind of put her in um, quite a conflict position. Uh, I'm presuming she's carrying kind of some sort of um, weapon. Um, so kind of changed it to make um, a statement about what was happening at the time in this place. Um, we've got a lovely French landscape um waterscape by Monet called the Water Lily Pond, which um, he he painted in 1899. And then come and guess what could what could Banksy do to this piece of work to um, to make it more modern, give it a little bit of humor. Yes, let's put some shopping trolleys and traffic cones in the water. Um, so kind of quite a depressing scene, quite a um, depressing kind of state, but also kind of quite humorous. And, um, and the skill also shows the skill of um, the painting and how that's kind of um, transferred across. So you're still looking at the Monet, but um, in a slightly different way. Um, okay, so they're kind of all artists. Um, this is um, Tom Hunter, and um, he's a photographer, um, and is also known for um, his pastiche work. Um, so the original painting on the left is um, by an artist called Vermeer, and it's called um, Girl Reading a Letter at an Open Window. So I like these titles that fully explain what is going on in that painting. Um, and he's taken a photo, but then created, recreated it using photography. Um, and um, this was from a series of photos that he took, um, just making a little bit of social commentary um, on things that were happening um, to his community at the time. So he um, lived on the street in Hackney in London, um, and um, himself and the residents were, um, were fighting eviction um, as squatters. Um, so he has um, taken the photo of this um, lady who's just um, received a letter um, evicting them, telling them that they need to leave the house. And as you can see, she's got like a young baby. Um, but he's really looked at how the light from the window is shining through, um, how it falls in the room and the sort of mood of that, that piece. So um, I'm sure the Vermeer one is not reading an eviction notice, but um, he's used that kind of thought to recreate um, the one on the right, um, but taken kind of really subtle references so that there's still like a really clear link. Um, and then um, we've got kind of um, another Da Vinci, Leonardo Da Vinci one um, called The Last Supper. Um, which again, many people have um, recreated um, using different faces um, for the people sat at the table. And um, so here we've got uh, full on Mario Kart um, characters, um, but set up again in exactly the same scene. So the setting is the same, it's just the characters that have been changed. Um, Oh yeah, so there's um, Mona Lisa again, and then here's some just examples that are just on the internet. Um, 
of different ways people have created a pastiche of the Mona Lisa. Um, so it could be something um, just very modern, like um, like nowadays, obviously, like masks are everywhere, um, or um, hubba bubba, um, or sort of listening to music. Like what would what would the Mona Lisa be doing now um, if she was alive and at that sort of age now? How would she dress? What would she look like? So her face is the same, but her whole kind of um, clothing is different. Um, and on the one on the right, you can see like it's got like Vinci written on her um, shoulder. But listening, that sort of listening to uh, music um, and just sort of thinking about the background, changing the background there. Um, or we've got like a pencil drawing. So almost like a copy of the art um, with a little bit of a subtle change. Um, here again, we've got Frida Kahlo. So for this one, um, they've actually just taken the painting and then used Photoshop or a sort of a digital um, program to layer different um, objects on. So you can see at the top, we've got the um, sort of coronavirus um, image that we kind of are used to seeing in the news. And then again, the mask. Can't, um, I think that's all that they've changed on this one. But, but yeah, so it could be something simple like that. Actually, they've used Adobe Spark, but you could use Photoshop or you could use PhotoP, um, um, which is a free digital um, program. But we can discuss that in the next session. Um, so we've got another Vermeer um, girl with a pearl earring, um, which again has been um, added some, some shades. And um, another photographer um, who's taken that sort of girl from the pearl earring. So if you notice like how it's very famous for having a very dark background. Um, those of you that looked at Kyrie during GCSE, that kind of really dramatic lighting um, and everything else is dark. Um, it's taken that idea and then used that in the, um, in the photography. Um, and then I was just going to quickly show you um, some that a student did. Um, so she looked at Paul Cezanne, um, who's very famous for doing these still life sort of table um, pieces. Um, and she decided that she was going to do um, a pastiche of Cezanne, but from different areas of life. Um, so this was her take on a sort of tr a traditional Cezanne. So he always has lots of fruit. Um, there's usually a bottle of wine in there. It's kind of very Parisian, French, um, sort of nice colours, like complementary colours, I should say. Um, and then, so that was her take on a traditional Cezanne. Um, so then she thought, um, let's do um, a student life Cezanne. And um, so same setup, but using different um, different objects um, and photograph that from sort of different viewpoints. Um, we've got country life, Suzanne. Um, so again, um, different objects, but to do with um, sort of life in the country as she would see it and ready-made Suzanne. So taking all the sort of um, ready-made meals, tins, a few frozen chips thrown in there um, and recreating that. A uh, bit of a close-up. And then rich Suzanne style. So again, um, tablecloth sort of folded, um, plain background, and then a uh, nice bottle of champagne. There. Um, okay, so what are you going to do? So um, for your next session, which is next week, the 8th of July, uh, we would like you to research a famous work of art um, visually and analytically. So um, have a look through, have a sort of Google of um, artworks. You could look at the National Portrait Gallery. You could look at the V&A Museum. Um, so, so maybe try and get an, a a picture, a painting that's um, in a museum. Um, I put famous in um, just because it doesn't have to be like um, 
are really instantly recognizable, but it does need to be from um, an artist, an established artist um, from the past. Um, we would like you to create a PowerPoint slide of your image um, and you can just, um, if you just put kind of what you, when I say analytically, I just mean like if you could um, say what you're going to analyze from that piece. So when we were looking at the Suzanne piece, um, she analyzed like how the, um, the table was set up and how there was a plain background um, and did that visually. You can do that visually or you can make notes. Um, some of the others, so like the Mona Lisa ones, they were <clears throat> analysed by um, how, what the face looked like. Um, so you don't need to do like a whole written analysis. Um, and then what we'd like you to do is to think about how you could then modernise it. Um, and if you kind of just make notes of that on the slide, um, that would be great and send it to myself, um, which is Lee Coleman, and or Mr. Check. The email addresses are there. Um, so Sasha, do we have to talk about it or do we put info on the slide? Um, up to you. Um, might be might be best to just put the info on the slide. Um, I mean, if you can turn on your mics, that would be great because it's, it's so much easier when you're actually talking to somebody um, and having a conversation about it, but if you don't feel comfortable doing that, then um, just put all the info on the slide and we can just sort of show them as we go through. Um, so you, we're not expecting you to actually recreate the artwork, just find um, an image and have an idea of what you could do. And then over the summer, um, you're going to like recreate it. And that can be um, entirely um and entirely whatever material you want to so you you could do a, take a photograph you could do a pencil drawing you could do um, a photoshopped um online image um up to you um but we can um we can discuss that at the next session so what we'd really like you to do is share which old master you've decided to use um Tell us a little bit about the piece of work, um, either on the slide or verbally, and how you are going to update it. So you don't actually have to update it yet, just um, have an idea of what you might do. And then for September, you'll create your own modern version of the famous work of art. You can use any media and technique. It can be any size, and we'd like you to have a little bit of fun doing it. So any other questions about the task, about the course, um, anything at all that you need, want to know? And um, you'll have our email addresses as well. So um, if anything does come up um, between now and then, or even over the summer, um, just drop us an email and um, we can help you out. So I'm going to stop sharing that. Um, so, any other questions? Okay, I'm, I'm guessing not then. Um, so, yeah, as I said, if anything comes up, then um, yeah, drop us an email. Um, otherwise, I'm going to end this call and uh, look forward to seeing what you decide, what you come up with, what ideas you come up with for the next session. Okay, um, I'll stay on for a little bit. So if you're um, if you're holding back, then um, then stay on. Otherwise, I'll say bye and see you next week or in September.